The reason I'm making this video is because sadly, it's that time of the year again where everybody goes back to school and everyone's super unhappy about it and everyone's stressed out and I, I, I just wanna help. The advice I'm gonna give in this video is not new, it's not unique, and it's stuff that even I heard when I was at school, which was like 30 years ago. But as a 23 year old woman, looking back at how I was at school and all the things that I did and didn't do, I really honestly wish that I had put my butt into gear and actually done all these things that I'm gonna tell you because it actually does help and hopefully hearing it from me makes a little bit more sense than hearing it from an adult who went to school like 50 years ago. But please just trust me because honestly I think that if I'd listened to half of this advice when I was at school, like my school life would have been so much easier and more stress free because I hated school. I always did my homework last minute or didn't do it at all and I was always in trouble and I was always being teased and just anyway. Hopefully this will help. This is how to have the best school year of your life. Step one, get organized. You've heard that a million times and you're sick of the word organized. Oh, I got it, I get it, I've got a diary. Not enough. What I mean by organized is not just filling in a school planner, it's having so many things around your house that make your life easier, that help you remember things. Even though I obviously don't go to school anymore, my life is filled with planners and it's filled with reminders of what I have to do for all of my schedules and if I didn't have them, my life would be a chaotic mess. Make lists, make calendars, do whatever you need to do to remind yourself of all of your lessons, all of your homework, all of the things you need to bring in your backpack, everything. I think honestly one of the best things you can do is, let's say you have seven classes, like English, maths, whatever, like there'll be more than seven, but let's say there's seven. Print out seven copies of a monthly calendar, like September 2015. Print out seven of those, one for each class that you have. Write in every day you have that lesson, at what time, write in when your homework is due, write in what books you have to bring, and just have like a really small binder of just those calendars. Now my school they had these things called homework planners, I don't know if you guys still have them, like personal planners or something that school gives to you, and you write in like, uh, you know, you're supposed to write in what your homework is and all that stuff, and then your form tutor signs it, and that's what we had. But also, get your own sort of planner for home as well. It just, it feels so good to have a planner that is your own, rather than one that the school gave you, because you will learn to hate that thing. In this planner, like, I write down what I need to do on what day, I have like a to-do list, I have contacts in here, I have everything that I need, and it's all in one place. I think one of my favourite things that I have in this entire flat is this Staples wall planner I have, it runs from August until July next year, and it's just, it's so easy easy to tell where you're gonna be at what time. It's just, it's supposed to be like a school year calendar and I just, I think it's honestly wonderful. If you have a Staples near you and they do them, it's worth the 7 99 If you fill it in every day, it's just, ah, oh, it's, it's the best. Hashtag not spot. Organize your bag the night before. Please. I never did that. I would always run around in the morning trying to find my maths book, trying to find my English book, just losing everything and having to ask for pieces of paper. And then when you ask for pieces of paper and you write down all your lesson stuff on that piece of paper, then you have to either copy it into your English book, let's face it, no one ever did. You lose a piece of paper, that lesson is gone and you have nothing to revise from. Just do your bag the night before with all of your lessons, like all of the books you need for each lesson. Just do it the night before. If you need to bring your PE kit, put it by your bag the night before. It will save you so much stress. Also have a clean bedroom. Clean room, clean mind. Clean room, clean mind. I know how hard it is to keep a bedroom tidy. My flat is constantly a mess, and my room when I lived with my parents was always a mess. Like, it was, I couldn't find anything, and I always said, well that's how I like it. I know where everything is. I absolutely did not know where anything was. Like I said, I know exactly how hard it is to keep a room tidy if you're one of those messy people like I was. If you are one of those messy people, set one day aside every week, like one evening where you just tidy your room, just once a week if you need to. I mean, like, the best scenario would be to tidy up after yourself, but let's face it, we will suck. You'll be so surprised at how much calmer you'll feel if you have a tidy room. I'm not even joking. Declutter your entire room. Get rid of anything that you haven't used in the last six months. That sounds really, really bizarre, but j j just do it. Jewelry box full of stuff you never wear? Empty it out. Books that you've read, you're not gonna read again? Give them to a charity shop. Clothes that you bought three years ago where you just think, well, I mean, I might wear it again one day? Get rid of it. Declutter. Minimize your life. Just become minimalist and just have the things you need. It is so incredible to do it. Step two, get into a good routine. I know what it's like staying up till 3 a.m. because you're scrolling through Tumblr. I was very lucky. I never had Tumblr when I was a kid. Like, it, it just wasn't around when I was at school. We had MySpace, and I used to stay up till 3 a.m. on MySpace doing nothing. Sometimes you need to take a step back, look at what you're scrolling down, and just go, am I wasting my time here? 
Yes, I am. When you realize that you've done nothing for like an hour, stop doing whatever it is that you're procrastinating with. I know that it feels like school goes on forever and ever and you can't wait for it to end, but it will go by so quickly. The, the older you get, like the further up in the years you get, the quicker it goes. You need to make every single second of these years count. That sounds so, I feel like I'm 50. You will thank yourself when you get into an exam. There you go, I'm old. Whatever time you woke up for school last year, wake up half an hour earlier this year. That half an hour will change your life. It gives you more time to wake up, gives you longer in the shower. If you put on makeup, it gives you longer to put makeup on. It means you won't be running out the door and you won't be tired before you even get to school. And it means you can eat breakfast, which is another step which I am dead serious on. I never ate breakfast when I was at school, never. I always skipped breakfast. My dad would try so hard to get me just to eat like toast or porridge. And I just, I would say to him, I don't have time. I don't like it, I'm not hungry. Cause I'm never usually hungry in the mornings or I never used to be. Now I make a point of eating breakfast every morning. I have either porridge, special K or jam on toast, which is the least healthy option. But sometimes you just, you just gotta have jam on toast. Breakfast fuels your body for the day ahead. I promise you it does. You'll feel instantly more awake the second you've eaten Something. I don't know why, but you just feel instantly more awake. It's like a placebo effect. I don't know. It starts off your digestive system so you won't be snacking at break time and you won't feel clogged up with like what's it or whatever it is you kids eat. 23 year old you will thank yourself. <laughs> what was that laugh? Have a set bedtime. Have a set bedtime. You need to set yourself a bedtime. I remember my dad used to make me go to bed at 10 o'clock in the evening and the Wi Fi would be turned off because I didn't have 4G or 3G back then. Oh no, none of that. I don't think 3G was a thing when I was, oh, oh no. 10 o'clock, clean teeth, get into bed. Like that was it. Except in my final year when my dad let me stay out to 11. Yay, thanks dad. I think the Wi-Fi would always be off. I'd be asleep by like half 11 and I'd wake up at like half seven? Might have been seven. It was a long time ago, but it was the same thing every morning. The more that your body is used to having that routine, the more awake you'll feel in the morning. You go to bed at the right time, you wake up at the right time, your body will get very used to it very quickly. Also, it means you'll probably start waking up early at the weekends, which means you have more time to do your homework. No? Speaking of homework, like I said, I was the absolute worst at school. I was the least organized person. I would do my homework on the bus the morning the homework was due. It would be like half a page when it was supposed to be like 5,000 words and I would just I would get in so much trouble. I honestly used to believe that, well, why do they make us do homework? Why don't they just teach it at school? They are teaching you it at school. They're trying to help you remember it all. It's good to have homework. It's good to, ah, oh, why was I such a bad kid? Print out another calendar or use that wall planner that I told you about earlier. Set aside an hour every night for homework. Just one hour, maybe two hours if you're feeling like a good person, but one hour every night. Once you've done that homework hour, Get a little sticker, those little like dot stickers, and then pop it on the calendar slash planner to say that you've done it. Then it's a case of just not breaking the chain. You just gotta earn that dot every day. That's it. That's, that's the method. You will get extremely competitive with your own mind if you have a dot that you need to like put on the calendar. You'll be like, I don't wanna do homework, but I, I, I can't lie about the dot. I don't know if that's just me, but I have a thing. Like if I haven't done something and I can't put a dot on the calendar, I get so mad at myself. And obviously I would tell you guys to do the homework the same night you get it, but let's be honest, we all slip up, we all get a bit lazy. Just do an hour a night, one hour a night, that's it. No Wi-Fi, well Wi-Fi if you need it for homework, but, but, but only homework. Step three, remember why you're there. When I was in secondary school, slash middle school, slash whatever Americans call it, all I cared about was whether people liked me or whether people were laughing about me behind my back or whether I'd fit into this group of friends if I asked to join them or why doesn't this person like me or why does this person hate me? It's such a waste of your time and energy to care what people around you think of you, I promise you. Here's the kicker, right? When you leave school, you will think you're gonna stay friends forever and you're gonna text every day and you're gonna hang out like you did at school. It doesn't happen. Slowly, you start canceling your plans with each other, texts become rarer and rarer, and you just, you stop talking. My point is that you might think now that being friends with people is the most important thing about school. Social cliques are the most important thing. They are not. You are at school 
to learn. It's an education facility, that's all you're there for. The people around you are only there to learn. Whether they choose to learn or not, that's their problem, not yours. If I could tell my 13, 14, 15, 16 year old self to do one thing, change one thing about how they were at school, it's that I would sit in the library every single lunchtime by myself. Or with friends, if they also wanted to do that, but no one else ever wanted to study. But I would use every single minute I had at school to learn. I would go and do the homework that I got in the morning, I would get it done at lunchtime. I wish I'd done that. I really wish I'd done that. If someone says something mean to you, like walking past you in the corridor, <laughs> Who cares? If there's a group of really popular kids who always look at you and then look at each other and then giggle and make you feel really small, who cares? They are wasting their time being nasty to other people. You are there to learn and that's what you're gonna do. Do you really think an examiner on the other side of the country is gonna go, oh well, Stacey only got enough marks here to be graded an E, but I heard she's friends with Kelsey now, so instant A. No, no. Who cares what the other fleshy bags of cells think of you? Just study. I know how hard it is to avoid bullying. I know it sucks and it makes you feel awful. But the day is over at 3.15, 3.30, whenever it is, it's just over. And the less you care about them, the less they'll care about you. If they call you something in the corridor, just walk on. They throw something at you at class, just put it on your desk. Don't let any idiots distract you from being smart. Okay, good. Step four. Teachers are not your enemy. Hopefully any teachers showing this at school have not just skipped to this bit because they just need a little bit of defending. You may think that teachers are just there to make your life hell. You may think they're giving you homework because they sit there at night going, ha 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 ha, I love grading in my spare time. I really don't want to embarrass any teachers here, but they went through university to study their subject that they're teaching and study teaching. They don't actually earn that much money per year and they go home every night and grade people's stuff. Like your school day ends at half three, four, whenever. Teacher's day ends at about nine, 10 o'clock at night, sometimes later. If they didn't want to teach you, they wouldn't be there because they could easily find a job that probably pays more and is less stressful. They want to help you. Some teachers, yeah, they're grumpy and they're horrible and they hate kids, but they still like teaching. What's most important to remember about teachers, because I have people my age who are going into teaching, they are human. They are adults and they are humans. They have emotions. If you feel like you're struggling with your homework, Go to their classroom at lunchtime and ask them for help. If you feel as though a teacher is picking on you unfairly, talk to them. Don't be scared of them. They're just adults. Go up to them at lunchtime, get them on their own and just politely say, I really feel as though you're picking on me in terms of, you know, calling me out for something when everyone else does it. Do, do you just not like me? Just, just say how you feel without being aggressive, without being horrible, and they will listen to you. And they'll probably say, actually, no, I have nothing against you. I just, you're the person I know is doing something wrong. Teachers are human. Many of them have children of their own. A lot of them have husbands and wives to go home to at night. They have gone through school. They have done homework. They have done exams. They have passed exams. They have failed exams. I know you have to call them sir or miss in the UK, but they are people. It wasn't until I got to college when I got to call my tutors by their first names that I really realized that they're just, they're there to work and they're there to help and they like what they do. Although I will say teachers, if you feel stuck in a rut and you don't like your job, don't take it out on the kids. All right, they're just kids. They got enough pressure. They really honestly do. Oh, also I forgot one thing, kind of step four and a half. Join a club. Like I totally get the love, you have social anxiety and you don't really wanna be around people that you don't know, get it. But if you can stomach it, if you can stomach the idea, if you've ever wanted to join a club, this is the year you do it. It doesn't matter if it's football at lunchtime, drama after school, chess club, whatever. Join a club that you think you could fit into. I really wish they had chess club. I am so good at chess, it's unreal. You will gain confidence, you will gain new skills, you will gain new friends. You'll start talking to people that you've never spoken to or people that you never thought you'd be able to speak to. And if you don't feel like there's a club for you, talk to somebody in your school. Talk to a teacher that you think could host that club if they have enough time. They may not, because they're always working. They're crazy people. Ask a teacher to set up a science club or a computer club or a netball club, whatever the whatever you feel like you could do. I never did after school drama club and I really, really honestly wish I had. So so if you have the ability to do it, then, then please do. Anyway guys, I really hope this video helps. Like these are the things that I really, really wish that I'd listened to. Have you discovered any tips that really help you but I haven't covered in this video? Let your friends know. Let people in the YouTube comments down below know as well. Have the best school year of your life guys and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.